for the day of the 23rd, Sunday after Pentecost, we begin the period of St. Mary's. In the epistle for this 23rd of Sunday after Pentecost, taken, St. Paul and the Philippians, chapter 7, and chapter 3. Brethren, be followers of me, and observe them who walk as you are, as, as you have your a model, as you have our model. For many, many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. <coughs> you mind earthly things, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will reform the body of our loneliness, made like to the body of his blood, according to the operation where, whereby also he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and most desired, my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beg of Odia, and I beseech Sintuche, to be of one mind in the Lord, and I entreat thee also, my sincere companion, help those women who have labored with me in the gospel, with Clement and the rest of my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. In the gospel, David, St. Matthew, chapter 9. At that time, when Jesus was speaking to the multitudes, behold, a certain ruler came up and, <clears throat> and adored him, saying, Lord, my daughter is even now dead. But come, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus, rising up, followed him with his disciples. And behold, the young woman, who was troubled with an issue of blood for twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I shall touch only the hem of his garment, only his garment, I shall be healed. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Be of good heart, daughter, thy faith hath made thee so holy. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus was come into the house of the ruler, and saw the minstrels and the multitude making a tumult, he said, Give place, for the girl is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. And when the little tube was put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. The fame thereof went abroad into all that country. That's all the words of today's holy God. The Father's Holy Ghost, Amen. On the December the 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, 31 days from now, will be the, uh, of course, of our principal feast day in the Society of St. Pius X. They do new our engagements and the new ones do their engagements in the society. And then also Lady Mount Carmel, yeah. the new, new young men, the, the, the ones who came last year to do their first engagements. The others, the deacons, make their first engagement in three years, have uh, the first three year engagements at the, uh, of the society. And then, of course, we have also on that day creation of Our Lady Mount Carmel Seminary as a family, Our Lady Mount Carmel Seminary and all the individual seminarians and members of the community that do the sacred heart of Jesus. So we begin the 30-day prayers and preparation tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we begin the preparations. The eve of the, first, eve of the 30th day, of the, of the first day is today, and then tomorrow, the first day, we will be following the devotions in the an ancient book called The Ancient Devotions of the Sacred Heart, which, you can, which if those who want to follow along with us, they can. Ancient Devotions of the Sacred Heart, which are it needs to be found on the, on the internet, ancient devotions of the Carthusians, of the Carthusian monks of the Sacred Heart. And today, a uh, few considerations on the beginning of this uh, preparation. So then, and uh, I'm to take it primarily from Rudolf of Saxony, who was a Carthusian monk in the 1300s and, uh, in Germany, and uh, died in the late 1300s, 700 years ago. And a few considerations on this. Uh, it is an ancient devotion, we call the devotion of the Sacred Heart since the time of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. But the Carthusians used to speak of this, this, this devotion 
as the devotion to the side of our Lord. The devotion to the sacred side of our Lord, there are five wounds of our Lord, and that the final wound was the wound of the heart, the wound of the side. And that the symbol of this devotion is the spear, the spear of Longinus, and also the heart. We find in the Carthusian monastery in the late 1800s, the first carving ever of the sacred heart that was ever done in the sacred heart of our Lord, carved in the monastery of the Carthusians in Germany, and that uh, and that the, that the heart was pierced by a lance, and that we must enter by the side of Christ through an open door in order to arrive at his holy heart. And it's the final wound of our Lord Jesus Christ and the most sacred of the five wounds. We have the two wounds in the hands, the two wounds in the feet. And these wounds cause us to be nailed to the cross. These wounds nail Jesus Christ to the cross so that he cannot move. We know concerning Jesus Christ as he hangs upon the cross that he is never going to move with his hands and he is never going to move with his feet because his work is done. And Ludolf the Carthusian tells us, says, consider that our Lord Jesus Christ, when he created the most beautiful of all beings, and he decided to create, he called her Eve. And Eve was created after man, Adam, had gone and looked at the whole world. And he saw how beautiful the world was. He saw how wonderful it was. And he went back to God and said, Lord, I thank you for the beautiful world that you have made for me. But there is no creature like unto myself, with whom I can share my life with whom I can share what is inside of my mind and inside of my being. And God wanted Adam to understand that while he made for him a beautiful world, and he made for him something most wonderful, that he was not meant to be alone. This is not the way that God wanted him to be. Therefore, he wanted Adam, even though he was perfect and had not committed any sin, he was filled with grace. He was able to walk with God. He did not know what sin was. Only goodness was in his mind, only goodness was in his heart. Only truth and goodness were all around the world, and he could see nothing but good. But yet he came to God and he said, Lord, I don't like to be alone. I love all the things you made for me, but I feel alone. There is no creature like unto myself. And then God speaks his first comment about man. And he says, it is not good for man to be alone. And therefore he put Adam to sleep. But before he put him to sleep, what did Adam have to do? God told Adam to go out and name the animals, to rule the earth, and to see things as they really are, to take care of the garden and rule the earth. And he went out and named the animals. He went out and took care of the garden, and he ruled the earth. And Adam was tired. He was tired from a day's work. So Adam went about a day's work. Even though it was not difficult work, it was still work, but he was tired. He came back to God, and he spoke to God, and he said that he was very grateful for all the wonderful things that God gave him, but he still felt as though there was something missing, because there was no creature like unto himself. And therefore, God put him to sleep, and he went to sleep. And while he was asleep, from his side was taken woman. So Ludolf, the, the, the monk, tells us, as the woman came from the side of man, and life comes, all life is, comes from that woman. For what did he call her? She is the mother of all the living. And where does the mother of all the living come from? The side of Adam. So likewise God will, when he made the new Adam, which is Jesus Christ, that he should do a day's work. And he did his day's work on Good Friday. He worked hard upon the cross. He shed every drop of his blood. He was scourged and crowned with thorns. Adam's work was easy, but Christ's work was most difficult. And he did his work, and then God put him to sleep. He was not killed by, the, by, by those that put him to death. He chose to give up the ghost, and he chose to die of his own free will. And he died upon the cross. And he lay upon the cross, but the work was not yet complete. Now notice the nails. They pierced the hand of Christ. The nails pierced the feet of Christ. And he is nailed to the cross. And he will never come off that cross to the end of the world. But then a soldier came. And he pierced the side of Christ. 
and out came blood and water. So we note here that when it comes to the spreading of our holy faith, the spreading the church to the ends of the world, it shall come out from the heart. It shall come out from the side. When you pierce a dead heart, if you pierce it, all that happens is that the spirit gets a little bit red. <laughs> Only a living heart, a vibrant living heart can spew forth blood. And that is why Longinus, when he pierced the side of our Lord, he had pierced many hearts. But when he had pierced the side of our Lord, he saw the blood come gushing forth, which meant the body was dead. And Jesus Christ's body was truly dead. But the heart was still alive. The heart was still alive, and out from that blood, heart came flowing blood and water, and Longinus converted, and there began the beginning of our holy church. For the bride of the church comes forth from the side of our Lord Jesus Christ's heart. And hence there was a devotion in the ancient times, even before St. Mark and Mary Alicott, to that spear, that spear that opened the door of the church, that spear that entered the heart of Christ and made an open door, and we pass through this open door. Now there are three great lessons, says Ludolf, that we can learn from this open door. The first one is this. <coughs> Who is there when the spear penetrated the heart of Christ? Remember that Jesus Christ died at 3 p.m. And that people were at the cross. What did they do? They all left the cross. They left. Because what is the point of staying there since Jesus Christ is dead? So they all left the cross. They all went away. They all went home because he's dead. There's nothing more to be done. But St. John, Mary Magdalene, Nick, and, and Simon the Cyrenian, and Nicodemus came back to the cross. And also a soldier. The soldier came back to the cross <coughs> because he was told he had to make sure the child, that Jesus was dead. Though he was already dead, he was to ensure that he was dead. <laughs> to make, to make give him a second spear and to cause a second death. And so several souls returned to the cross. First of all, those four holy ones, they returned to the cross. And the Blessed Virgin Mary and, and, and St. Mary Magdalene, St. Simeon, and Saint, uh, Simon the Cyrenian, and Nick Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, they all returned to the cross to complete the burial. And as they returned to the cross, they will witness the great miracle. So the first thing, says Ludolf, who wants to understand the heart of Jesus Christ, let him be dead with Jesus Christ. For before his heart was able to spring forth blood, before it was able to transform the world, before it was able to be the birth of our Holy Mother, the Church, which sprang from his side, as Eve sprang from the side of Adam, so our Holy Mother of the Church sprang from the side of Jesus Christ. And it sprang from the side only after he was dead. And this you must understand in our Holy Church that our founder is dead. Our founder has died. And if we want to be with him, we must also be dead. And hence the first duty of everyone who wants to learn about the heart of Jesus Christ is he must die to sin and to the world. What happened on that 3 p.m.? The people of the world left. Caiaphas left. Annas left. Some of them were striking their hearts. They were striking their breasts as they walked away from Jesus Christ. Not all who strike their breasts are walking to Christ. Some who strike their breasts are walking away from Christ. Judas said, I have committed a great sin. And he struck his breast. And Judas wept. And Judas threw coins upon the floor. And he gave back the money that he had stolen by sin. But Judas did not save his soul. Because Judas walked away from Christ. And Judas repented unto himself. And he did not return to the cross. Whereas the wicked soldier, though he was responsible for the death of Christ, he still returned to the cross. And those Mary Magdalene and said, Blessed Virgin Mary and Nicodemus and, and Simon the Serenian, they returned to the cross. They came back to the cross. Joseph of Arimathea. They came back to the cross. <clears throat> they came back to the cross in order to complete the burial of Christ. So the first thing to learn says this, it says to Ludolf, is that we must walk from sin and die to sin. It's the first condition to understanding what is inside the open door. 
Notice the open door is on the right side of our Lord, but the heart is on the left. Now, as we walk through the open door of the right side of our Lord, we must go down the journey of that sphere as it travels through the body of Christ and finally reaches his heart. We will not see the heart until we have entered inside of that side door and travel up to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the importance of the Holy Sacrament of Confession. God gave us this Holy Sacrament in order that we might leave behind sin and enter into the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is most necessary that we do that. So the first thing is to be dead to sin. And the second is to remember that once that spear pierced the heart of Christ, outflowed gushing forth blood and water. Normally it's the feet that carry us throughout the world. It's the hands that build churches. This is the feet of us living men on earth. The hands of us living men on earth. We must carry, we must be the feet of Christ and we must be the hands of Christ. But we cannot be the heart of Christ. His hands are nailed to the cross, therefore my hands must build. His hands are nailed to the cross, Therefore, my, his feet are nailed to the cross. Therefore, my feet must walk. But if I walk and move my hands without the heart, then I am dead. And if I have only my heart, it is dead. We must carry the heart of Jesus Christ inside of us. We must be the hands and the feet of his heart. But there is only one heart in our church. There is only one most sacred heart. <coughs> and that heart is on the cross. And it spends blood out from that heart into the entirety of the mystical body of Christ. So the church is born from the heart, from the side of Christ. And the church is born from his side, as Rudolph. Remember that the sacraments have their power from the side of our Lord Jesus Christ. The spear we must first walk away from sin, and then secondly, we must enter by way of the door, as our Lord Jesus Christ did, and recognize that all the power of the sacraments and all the power of the grace of our church comes from that sacred heart. We need the sacred heart in the time of crucifixion. Our church is experiencing crucifixion right now. See, Margaret Mary Alacock, through several hundred years ago, that there must be a great devotion to the sacred heart. Leo XIII was asked to consecrate the entire 20th century with the sacred heart. France was asked to be consecrated the sacred heart, and they disobeyed. Ecuador was consecrated to the sacred heart, and that the sacred heart is most essential to us in order to get through the battle of the crucifixion of the church. There must be the heart of Jesus Christ inside of us. And so we must, we must therefore uh, beg the grace of a devotion to this most sacred heart. And the, the church's sacraments, the church is born, and the sacraments are born from the sacred heart. <laughs> and then remember also <laughs> that <clears throat> the blood that flows forth is the only life-giving blood. And we're going to have the, the, the offering and the, 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 the consecration of the seminary of the sacred heart. And then also says that Ludolf, that remember the first consideration, that all good things, that which proceedeth the good man from his heart proceedeth good things. The evil man from his heart proceedeth evil things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So says our Lord at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the Gospel of St. Luke. The evil man, the good man, out of his heart comes good things. The evil man, out of his heart comes evil things. For from the abundance of the heart, doth the mouth speak. And we must recognize also that as our Lord hangs upon the cross, how does he express his heart? How does the heart travel to the ends of the earth? It travels from the, his mouth by speaking his seven last words. And we must speak these seven last words in the time of the persecution of the church. We must speak these seven last words in the time of this crucifixion of the church, which we're undergoing right now. And that, 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 that in order to make it through this time, we must be close to the most sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. And remember also that the heart of his blood, coming from the heart of Jesus Christ, it comes from his heart, and then it passes through the Immaculate Heart. And then from her heart, it is distributed to all of us. And so just remember that we, 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 the, the heart is, is what's missing in the world today. It's very, very clear and very easy to see in the world today. We are in a cold and dead world. The world is cold and the world is dead. There is no life in our church. There's no life in our families. There's no life in our country. There's no life in our world. Well, life is, comes from the heart. The heart must be beating with power. The heart must be beating with strength. And the heart does not beat anymore with strength in our holy church. 
Because the members of this church, priests and bishops <coughs> and the faithful, have all decided to leave behind the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ in, on the inside. And some are walking with their feet a little. Some are moving their hands a little. But if the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ is not within, then there is no life in that which we do. And hence we begin tomorrow, the first of the 30 days of the, the, the preparation for the consecration <coughs> of our seminary, the seminarians, <coughs> and all the labor of Carmel, do the sacred heart. Gordon Method of Father Mateo in uh, South America, bringing this our devotion here to the United States and throughout the world, and then putting it into practice the request of, of St. Margaret Mary Alacock to consecrate ourselves and our families. Maybe it's good that their families should all, all your families should already be consecrated to the Sacred Heart. If it's not, then be sure to do so. And then also they could do a renewal of the consecration of the Sacred Heart. And then we'll do this renewal or first consecration on this December the 8th. Remember that in the time of great battle, we must pass through that open door. And Longinus was evil when he came back to Christ, but something brought him back. Was it only evil that brought him back? It was some kind of attraction that even though Jesus Christ was dead, even though there was nothing to see, he felt as though he had to come back. Something brought him to come back to that cross. The other soldiers didn't come back, but he came back. And then he took the spear and pierced the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blood came down that spear and touched his hands. And the blood and the blood and the, and the water came forth. And it is the foundation and the beginning of our holy church. God perfected and completed and fixed all the mistakes of Adam and all the mistakes of Eve. And Adam grew a great terrible sin of pride. And Adam, Adam, Adam listened to Eve. And because it listened to her, there came sin in our world. So Christ is going to fix it all. And Christ fixed it by putting himself to sleep on the cross. And also as Adam listened to Eve, and this caused our destruction, so Jesus Christ listens to his mother, and this causes our life. She will listen to her. He will follow her advice. Adam followed the advice of Eve, and it's bad for all of us. And Jesus Christ follows the advice of his mother, and it is our salvation. There will not be any way to happiness without these two hearts. The heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, his most sacred heart, and the heart of his most blessed, beloved mother. And remember, also, in Kentucky there is Father Urban Snyder, Father Urban Snyder who died of Alzheimer's. And in his last years, he couldn't remember that he gave the same sermon every week. He would give the same sermon every single week. And he couldn't remember he gave the same sermon the week before. But every single week, he would sing the pulpit. And he would say in those last years, keep your eye on heaven as the end and goal of life. There is even a place in purgatory for those that don't desire it enough. But if you want to go to heaven, you must love the most sacred heart. But you cannot love the sacred heart. No one can love the sacred heart worthily except the Blessed Virgin Mary. And therefore, Ask the Holy Mother to give you her heart with which to love her son. But you cannot love her as she needs to be loved. It cannot be done. No one can love her to her as she can be loved, as she should be loved. And therefore, ask the Lord Jesus Christ to give you his heart with which to love his mother. And so let the Blessed Virgin give us her heart with which to love her son. And let our Lord Jesus Christ give us his heart with which to love his mother. We must travel with their hearts inside of us. We have bodies, but we don't have hearts. Therefore, let the left side and right side of our heart be the immaculate and the sacred heart. Let these hearts be inside of us. And so we're going to reconsecrate our families, to reconsecrate our seminary, consecrate our seminary officially, actually the first time as a family, as a seminary, to the sacred heart on December the 8th. So Father Urban Snyder, those last two years, he could not remember what he preached the week before. But it still comes, and it's still true. And the word comes forth from the heart. He asked the Blessed Virgin Mary to give you her heart, with which you love her son, and asked the Sacred Heart to give you his heart, with which you love the mother. And let our hearts be replaced by the heart of Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother. And these hearts cannot be defeated, they cannot be dropped but down, no matter what our weaknesses, no matter who are our enemies. We say that to you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.